one of my most favorite Christmas movies is It's a Wonderful Life. Most of you have probably seen it with Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed. <clears throat> Besides the story itself, one thing I find interesting is the way in which the story is told. It begins in the moment just before a crisis in George Bailey's life. Clarence, an angel being sent to help him, is told George's story through a series of flashbacks so that he can really understand how George found himself in this predicament and why it was so important to help him. This technique of looking back is a common method used in storytelling, not only in the literature of the day, but for most of human history. Look at today's gospel. As John prepares to tell the story of Jesus, he doesn't begin at the birth or at the start of earthly ministry, as others do. He looks back and starts where the story really begins so that his reader can understand how and why this story is so important. As anyone who has ever tried to tell a story knows, the first lines of a story are critical. The storyteller must catch the listener or reader's attention quickly, lest they tune out or not read at all. Some of the most famous stories are known by their opening lines. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> when he was nearly 13, my brother Jim got his arm badly broken at the elbow. Ooh, I caught you on that one, to kill a mockingbird. Mm. The opening line sets the stage for what is to follow. Listen to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right away, his listeners, his readers know this story is tied to a much older one, a more ancient story. This is not just a story about another man named Jesus who came among the people with words of wisdom or to show them a better way, but the story of God's relationship with and to humanity. And how do we know? He begins at the beginning. But not just the beginning of all creation, which the first three words tend to imply, but as we continue into the next verse, we hear the beginning of all time. Just as there is today, when John wrote his account, there was great debate about exactly who Jesus really was. Some saw him as a great prophet, and later that's how we'll see him portrayed in the Quran. Others saw him as a radical as Josephus will echo in his historical account of the Roman occupation. Some saw him as a divine being, and others saw him as a human possessed. John sets out to tell us exactly who Jesus was, and in his opening line makes it clear that he believes that Jesus was God. Not God sitting on a throne somewhere, but as we see later on in verse 14, God incarnate. God who became one of us, that we might know God's unfailing love and faithfulness in a real and tangible way. <clears throat> one commentary I read said that John was trying to do this so that he was bearing witness to the fact that Jesus was the perfect expression of God in human form. And why is that witness so important? 
Because just like those who saw Jesus walking on the earth, we still find it hard to get our arms around the idea of a fully divine and fully human being. <clears throat> we tend to stress one nature over the other as our logic or our heart directs us. That's one reason why, especially this time of year, we find it so much easier to see Jesus as a, a little baby who grows up to do wonderful things. However, we can't begin to understand how wonderful the things are that he does or the impact he will have on our lives or the lives of others unless we understand not only who Jesus was, but who Jesus is. So like Clarence the angel, and later George Bailey himself, we hear his story in a series of flashbacks. Flashbacks that slowly reveal, like a light, slowly overcoming darkness, the true nature of Jesus Christ. In hopes that we will make the connection. Finally understanding how humanity found itself in this predicament and the extent God went to, to save us from ourselves. Now I suspect this is a little deep for the first Sunday after Christmas. I recognize many of us are still feeling the effects of holiday celebrations. But if we are going to understand how the salvation story that we have in the Bible, a story that began so many years ago, still applies in the world today, we need to know and hear the story from the beginning. One problem we face is that we can't take it all in at one time. Why? Because it's an overwhelming story of love and faithfulness that calls us to respond in ways that at times can be hard to do. Thankfully, we hear the story through a series of flashbacks. And every once in a while, we are reminded that while the flashbacks, interesting and encouraging in and of themselves, are tied to an even bigger story, a story that has its roots in the very beginning. When love and faithfulness first sought expression in, through, and with all of creation, this first Sunday after Christmas, we take pause. Having celebrated the birth of Jesus, to reflect on who he was, who he is, and why his story matters. 